Hello and welcome to my stream. My name is Little and today I am going to continue to read the comic of Homestuck with the unofficial Homestuck collection. We are in the midst of Act 4 and I think we are pretty far deep into it, so we may even get to the end of Act 4 animation and start Act 5. So far we are looking at this cruiser that uh, is cruising through space and a meteorite as we can see. So let's go to the next page. We are zooming in on someone on the cruiser. It's Rose's mom and John's dad. Barry, it's a great to see you. Ah, she, he has her scarf. Ha, of course he has a fetch modus of wallet. She's very happy to have her scarf returned to her. There's a blooming romance somewhere in between here. Oh yes, there are such a blooming romance. CG troll John. See, this is a case in point. What point? The point I was just making about the ultimate riddle. You're blizzing a feckled shit hole. Okay, that's your cue to laugh at me some more, I guess, because you seem to really get off whenever I flame you. Humans are deranged. Yeah, so you were in for a while because we are pretty far into the story already and you will probably get nothing. <laughs> but you can feel free to watch all the readings I've done on YouTube already to get up to date. Oh man, I must be getting closer to the conversations where you are trolling me harder. This is pretty exciting. I can't wait to see what you've got up your sleeve. You see what I mean? Fuck you about that. Anyway, you weren't making a point about the ultimate riddle, dude. Yes, I was, and now I'm losing my train of thought, dipshit. Nope, we never talked about it. Yet. Oh hell, that's right. Damn it, I guess this is going to be confusing. Oh, you're just starting to figure that out now. See, I kind of painted myself into a corner. I started trolling you at the end, just before the rift, and then jumped back a little. And now I guess I've become railroaded, railroaded into working backwards here. Unless I want to do the sort of dumb schizophrenic hopping around like the others. Oh my god, I know, you've already told me like a million times. I have? Wow, I can't wait for all these amazing conversations to take place. It's going to be like that human vacation with a giant red chimney asshole up, up in here. You know, the one where a bunch of moany nooksuckers sing at a little pine tree, I think. Man, I've got to say I'm a little disappointed by this masterful trolling you were bragging about. I was bragging? Why would I bother with the sort of pedantic human horseshit? Maybe you should consider that I was bragging to get your hopes up in the future, only to let you down. And thus troll your master fully in that respect. <clears throat> Maybe, that, but that would be pretty weak too. Your brittle human calcium based skull is what is weak, and if you and I were in the proximity of a blunt instrument, I wouldn't have much trouble proving it. Uh, I don't know what WE is actually. So what was the case and point you were making anyway? I was scrolling back and noticed you were in the wheel. Why wow, I am? Yeah, dum dum, you're tumbling around on a big gutter meteor. And you just created younger versions of yourselves and your guardians. Probably by mucking around with that thing like a dofus. Wait, these are baby versions of us? Ha 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 ha, so clueless. What did you think you were doing there anyway? Well, I saw footage of my nana and some other people who I'm pretty sure were like Jabe's grandpa and Rose's mom and stuff for a long time ago and then there were all these little guys going around, so they are like cloned copies of us? No, they are literally you and your guardians, paradox clones, huh? What do you mean they are literally us? Do they go back in time? Yeah, obviously, great guess, brain hero. But technically they aren't even sent back in time because with respect to the medium, your universe timeline is meaningless. Seriously, I wouldn't give a crap about Earth's past or future or whatever. From its perspective, it's just a bunch of points to choose from. Just like your chronology is from our perspective. But I guess that's a bunch of semantics. With respect to your personal chronology, yeah, they go back in time. A paradox clone is by definition a correctly cloned duplicate that will inevitably go back in time and become the original target that was cloned. If it's a malformed clone, it's just a meaningless mutant that has no bearing on the stable loop continuum. I don't see any tentacles or extra eyeballs or warped bone bulge, 
So those gross little things here are all you guys waiting to go to Earth and grow up and become the insipid bunch of gob douchebags you all are now. And this was the point I was trying to make about the ultimate whittle. What is a whittle anyway? Maybe I can guess, I am good at whittles. <laughs> I will be so confused that I won't even spoil myself, so yeah, <laughs> really? Haha, <laughs> think again, Ignoramus. It's not even that great, or even much of a whittle at all. In the course of your adventure, you would have encountered all these fragments of like weird poems and shit. You find them along your quest, with clues and stuff buried in them to help you solve puzzles and move huge stone columns and make staircases appear and lots of nonsense like that. And it's all masked in this flowery sort of fussy poetic jackassy nobody really cares about. And I sure as hell don't care about spoiling it for you. But what all these lofty symbolic illusions boil down to is some grander statement about what you see happening here. That you were always the key to seeding your own existence through this game. And any hopes that it could have played out differently or that you could have avoided this whole mess was always just a muse. A distraction, perhaps? What? Never mind. Because if it didn't go down this way, then how were you even born, get it? Which is especially pathetic since Paradox Space apparently went to all this trouble to make you just to have you fail and die. Really, there's nothing more tragic than these null sessions. Full of kids entering the game and fulfilling some cosmic destiny shit just to get wiped out and leave behind an empty, pointless, insipi, insipi sphere for all eternity. Actually, it's sort of hilarious. Or it would be if it didn't affect me personally, but anyway, there's a lot more to the riddle than just that, like what we were just talking about last time we talked. But that's sort of the gist of the themes it deals with, okay? Well, if I run into some salamanders who tell me all about this riddle and get really excited about it, I will try to act surprised. So this is the same kind of thing you went through, with like being your own paradox clones and creating your own parents and stuff, yeah. How did it even work with 12 of you? It was really fucking complicated and I'm not going to get into it. Our family structures are already way more complicated than yours without even getting spooky time slime involved. Basically, we have nothing in common whatsoever, except maybe this. I was a guy in your position to make all these clones and frankly, it all kind of freaked me the hell out. Ha, huh, yeah, I guess now that you mention it, I'm finding it all a little strange. Oh, only just now. Fuck, you are fast. I hope you've got some mad boom bucks to pay off those speeding tickets. No, no. I mean, the ghost stuff and paradoxes are one thing, of course. It's something else. It's just... This is really weird. What's so weird about it? Well, normally humans hatch from like these slimy pots. Then we wiggle out as a little pink lava. Oh, really? Huh. Maybe we have more in common than I thought. <laughs> Maybe those really are mutant clowns and they aren't going back to seed your planet. Um, sure? Hell, I'm confused now. Not that I give a shit about you and your pointless awful lives. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't you get back to me in a few minutes? I mean like a few minutes of my time, not yours. All of these little pink monkeys are getting way out of line and I have to tend to some. If you message me in a couple minutes, we can continue conversing in the same linear fashion for a change. Um, okay? And then after that you can keep going backwards and then make fun of me riding my little red rocket. You can tell me I look like a silly little paradox clone fresh out of my slime tube and this is just all a big noisy time. This is jamboree. That would burn me good. Okay, that is pretty good. But I can't use it because you said that and then later, uh, i.e. right now, you would get the satisfaction of knowing you were the one to come up with that burn. See, you are dealing with a pro, you can't out troll me so just forget about it and stop trying. <laughs> John, tend to little pink monkeys. Oh my god, this was the longest pestilog ever. <laughs> They're scrambling all over the place. <laughs> this was one of the most confusing things about Homestuck, so that you are just coming in right now. It's really, I had to explain too much. <laughs> I can say this. There yeah, is a bunch of children, juveniles, who are playing a game. The game is reality bending. They are actually in the world of the game. There are 12 trolls that help them. Hello, Panda. <laughs> and it's kind of all of a huge circle. And this uh, boy named John, he just cloned himself and the, and the parents of everyone who's involved. 
Cell scrambling all over the place. They appear to be preoccupied by some of the objects littered around the lab. At least it is keeping them busy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, little Kel is here. <laughs> this is a hell of a place to jump in. <laughs> Oh no, do I have to do the car cat voice again? John, get trolled by CG again. Okay, it's a few minutes later. Look how sane and linear we are being. Yeah? Oh, okay, awesome. Now fuck you and goodbye. Wait! What? I was just looking at all these rascals and I was wondering how they go back in time and become us and stuff. Does it have something to do with the reckoning? How do you know about that? You told me. We had this great dare going. To see who could be the least helpful and informative and you totally lost dude, you were hella helpful. I was obviously just spiting your stupid pointless human dare. What is a dare anyway? It's nothing. Someone says do something and then, oh, laugh, laugh, you lose if you don't do it. That isn't anything that deserves a word. We don't even have a word for dare in our language. The close approximation would be worthless fucking bullshit waste of time for silly little children. Oh, wow. Is that the title of a movie too? Yes, it's the title of every dumb movie you ever liked. Haha, <laughs> that isn't even true and doesn't make sense. Anyway, how could we have made the dare by moving backwards on your timeline? You would dare me to do something, then I would do it next time, but then you wouldn't even remember the dare. Because we didn't make it yet. That's what isn't true and doesn't make sense, you damn pack of puke. Well, yeah, the dare never happened. I was joking around and made it up to give you a hard time. Yeah, he's actually pretty funny. Oh, I love him. He's one of my favorite characters, actually. <laughs> Slight spoilers, but this guy will have conversations and arguments with himself. And it's the greatest shit ever. You have sounding stupid down to such a science. Where's your lab coat and test tubes, Dr. Brain Professor? I'm wearing a lab coat, sort of. You look like an elf. That's bullshit. You look like you, should, like you should be blowing into a funny little shell and limbering up for a silly cookie dance. Do you even have elves? Yes, let's compare which fancy creatures that don't exist we both do or don't not have. What a great fucking idea, John. Uh, what? You asked about the reckoning, so why don't we talk about that instead of all these pretty much terrible things? Okay. Yeah, so when the reckoning starts happening, all these Paradox clones get chipped off the meteors, flung through scale and defense portals and sent back to Earth. End of story, I guess. Bye. Wait, so that means we are all sort of like Superman? Well, uh, yeah, I guess. Cool. You all trace the mythological footsteps of your beloved human Superman, who's really just a muscular Caucasian alien. It's hilarious how, who sh how humans worship him as a pinnacle of human heroism and virtue, but he isn't even human. Actually, it's incredibly pathetic, but also in a way kind of admirable, because it means deep down you all must realize who your daddy is. We are bitches. Yeah, Superman is pretty cool, I guess. Did you know Nicolas Cage was almost going to play Superman one time? I'm actually really glad that didn't happen. Oh, my stopping flagging lobe. Who gives a barfing fuck about that? John Eckbert, you have assassinated my patients. A just loser. Wait! Get back to me in a couple minutes, okay? A key slam. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this, so fine. <laughs> Wait, where were you having conversations with yourself? Face form two times combo. <laughs> AR Shred. You are whipping up so many hellacious shreds, this fierce shitty business he is getting so deliriously rude brazen it. Okay, you lost the handle on that sentence. Oh my god, is that what you think it is? <laughs> yeah, I mean, talking to yourself is normal. But what, what this guy does is going a bit farther. This thing is so completely illegal. How could this atrocity be floating out here unnoticed all this time? We are going to throw whoever is responsible into the slammer. You always call jail the slimmer when you are extra angry at crimes. AR, go in. I'm seeing a turtle and a frog and grass and a mini fox. And there's a sky and symbol. There's a large elevator platform ahead. AR, go down. B, 
Below there is a dark cavernous room. Near the platform is a time capsule. It has deployed a seat and waits for something to be deposited and for the clock to be set. It is all harmless enough, still no sign of any perpetrators. <laughs> Foggy touching bar, the descendant. <laughs> you actually own to something here. AR, search premises. Uh, premises, premises. Deeper into the darkness of the room, there is some complicated lab equipment. Again, nothing particularly unusual for this jurisdiction. AR, examine equipment. It's the 21st of April of 1910. 1910. There's a large monitor. Displayed on it is a small human girl in a fancy house. The date is April 21, 1910. Eight days prior, the orphan girl was taken in by an aristocratic southern colonel and legendary humorist. He recovered the young lady from a crater where a bakery once stood, operated by the man's wife, a notable baked goods baroness. <laughs> It's impossible to not predict Homestuck. There's an explosion in the colonel's backyard. Land sakes alive. We are cooking with petrol now. <laughs> Even the baby is <laughs> fogged. The colonel and his new granddaughter investigate. The impact site is where a dog house stood moments ago. It was a magnificent abode of the man's beloved pet, Helly. He takes a belt from the old tulip flask. He'd sooner perish himself than lose that dear animal. <laughs> oh, he got shot. People would think the parts of the man's death were greatly exaggerated, but they weren't. This is exactly why babies should not be allowed to duel with flintlock pistols. An old colonel lost, but a new brother gained. <laughs> Look how the toddler just climbs out of the crater. <laughs> Aha, there's Helly. The youngsters adore the new guardian. Good dog, best friend. The young boy has difficulty pronouncing the name, so sounds more like Harley when he says it. AR, fast forward. 13 years later, the boy develops a taste for adventure. He and his guardian bid farewell. His sister is sad. She will be left all alone with a wicked pestry baroness. She can handle it, he tells her. He believes in her. Hey, nice to see you, Del, and it's okay. You can uh, watch it on YouTube once your Wi-Fi is okay again. Falling out of the crate as me waking up in the morning, having to leave the bed. <laughs> Especially good in the winter. Relatable. This all seems pointless to you, the mutual to the crime that has been committed. So you do find it odd that the purifier target has been fixed over that especially stupid looking animal. Here's elevator platform, someone is coming. Oh, it's Diamond Dukes. Wow, whatever his name is, it, I think it's a Ducalian dignitary at the moment. It is a high-ranking agent from your kingdom. Could he be the man behind this crime? Could his intent be mutinous? You know the agent to be far too dangerous to take into custody. You hide behind some equipment on the observe. He appears to be holding some notebooks, also what appears to be a pair of juice-stained envelopes. I mean, knowing. We know the stuff. Discard. <laughs> Only one of the books is useful to him. The envelopes are useless, and he couldn't make it through more than a paragraph of the other book. Some weird thing about wizards. He discards them. The spare notebook lands on the floor. The envelopes land in the seat. The time capsule stores the seat in the account of some default settings for a to bloom several hundred million years from now. The capsules and what is a new seat. It's always the 413. 413 is a homestuck number. The agent approaches another device near the large monitor. John, get trolled by Chi Chi, insane and linear manner. <laughs> I just laugh at the kitten. The mutant kitten is always around. Okay, I got back to you. Are you happy? Sure, I guess. You don't even know it yet. 
and you are about to start passing out bunnies like they are cheap cigars. It's going to be an embarrassing display. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly, numbskull. Let's just have our jets and it can actually occur to you to be an idiot in the due course of time. Okay, I was sort of mulling it over while looking at all these babies with guns and sitting on ponies and things, and how the reckoning takes them back, and how you said our reckoning starts sooner. Yeah, are you sure it has to start so soon? Can't we delay it? Ha ha ha, it starts in a few minutes, stupid. See that countdown clock over there? You aren't delaying anything. Oh dang, I guess I better get off this meteor then. Well, I mean, it doesn't happen all at once. First some smaller meteors go, then bigger ones spread out over like 24 hours or so. It's supposed to be like go time when it starts. Like it's time to hurry up and stop fucking around and kill the boss, get it? So walk your on doesn't blast off right away. Too bad, because it would have spared you from making a fool of yourself in a couple of minutes. And more importantly, spared me from having to watch. Okay, well, you keep seeing, saying how doomed we are and how all this bad stuff happens sooner, but you never say why. What happens in our game that's different from yours that makes things go so badly? Jack Noir. There, we have a ram line. Who is Jack Noir, an agent of Duras, who flipped out and rose to power? He killed your black queen, queen and king and now he's in charge. So you didn't have him in your game? No, we did, but he was harmless. Actually, he was an ally, ally sort of. He settled a grudge against the queen by helping us dethrone and exile her. And then he wound up exiled himself and sort of kept helping us through a common terminal on our old planet. He's kind of a huge asshole, so. But because he took the queen out of the picture, when we got to Skaya, we only had one monarch to deal with instead of two. Of course, it was this nasty giant 12 times prototype Black King that took forever to kill. Just barely in time before the biggest meteors came, but still. I see. So after he got exiled and all that, he came here into our game and caused all this trouble. No god, Eggbird, you are sicker than that hideous joke book you battle around with. Try to think more abstractly. Think about video games. What's an Earth game you like to play? Name one. Um, Crash Bandicoot? Okay, I don't know what that is, but I have a feeling it's a really lame example, but that's fine, it's not the point. Oops, so let's say you play your bandicoot and I play my bandicoot. They are essentially the same bandicoot, same appearance and design and behaviors. But they are still completely separate bandicoots on separate screens. So we both have our own S bandicoots to ourselves, the same but different. Our checks are the same but different too. Same guy, different circumstances and outcomes. Our Jack trumped the queen but got no further. Your Jack got the boss of both of them and is now something higher than a queen or a king. Like an ace? Sure, okay. Okay, I think I get it. But how did he do that? What was different about what we did versus what you did? Frankly, I have no idea what the original thing that tipped the scale was. It is under investigation, but it doesn't really matter. The worst is yet to come. For you. Oh no, what is the worst thing? Already told you. Damn it. Oh hey. So we hold on, this little lady is bugging me about something. Yeah, yeah, you might as well get it over with and give her the lousy rabbit already. Oh. Oh man, I just had the best idea, this is so perfect. A blonde mother and daughter together, this is totally perfect. Perfect for what? Flexing your formidable mental handicap like a fucking heavyweight for the next several minutes? Oh wait, let me check. The answer is yes. You dislike that scene in Conair? I will give her the bunny like I'm Nick Cage fresh out of the slammer. Fuck. I wish I had a filthy wife beater on. Oh well, just arg. John, reunite with your loving wife and daughter. John is obsessed with this movie named Cornea and the scene at the end of it.
maybe I know what just the car could reaction the best about it. Official homestay collection where we use it as the best cat, the best way to experience it. Pretty much. That John is actually singing that. I'm pretty sure this is not the end of Act 4. What are you talking about? It'll be a few more pages. Thank you. Because <laughs> the actual end of Act 4 animation is better than that. But I have to say, it's one of the best joke animations they did. We have blood on our hands. Dave, get trolled by she's by she see. Dave, what's it smell like? What? Your blood, fuck off. Yes, it's getting really good. <laughs> Dave, give it a little taste for me. Tell me what human blood tastes like. I've been so curious. You are so, you are so annoying blind one, aren't you? Yeah, Dave told me about you. God, too many Daves. It's like this big asshole and cool guy party, but someone forgot to invite all the cool guys. Man, I'm telling you burns like that are unreal. Where do you even get a burn that's that sick? I bet you can't wait to be useless piece of shit all day. Fall down and fall down all these burns. No, you messed it up. Dave, Dave, is this you? <laughs> Human child is Dave. <laughs> Ooh, ha 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 ha. Did you try to draw shades on his face and miss what's even the point? He's already wearing shades. Ha ha ha, it's so perfect. That is so you. Ha ha ha. This is more one egg. Dave, tell me what your blood smells like. Or I'll make another one. And I know these hurt your feelings. I don't know what it smells like or tastes like, but I sure as hell know what it looks like, like a fucking symphony on my retinas. Shit is beautiful like little vermilion picnic on my hands. Every day I open my eyes, I find poetry and even the simple things. Just one of these little joys in life you take for granted, you know. This miraculous gift of vision. Dave, Dave, check it out. I figured it out. This has got to be you. It's getting worse. <laughs> God, what kind of game was this even? <laughs> I could give myself a hernia trying to be as a big douche as that guy. I could try, but I would wind up like a motorcycle stunt gun horribly wrong. My broken body would flop and tumble around like a wreck doll. Ha 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 ha, oh god, I can't breathe. And yet as much as that guy is the tooliest dude I could ever hope to meet, he and I would still get along famously. Cause we can both see. Ha 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 ha, just him and me. Having a sea party, like a couple of eagle-eyed bros peeping shit up into the wee hours. Dave, can I come to your sea party? I guess, but you'll have to be careful not to stumble around bumping into all the gorgeous masterpieces hanging around everywhere. God so beautiful to look at with my perfect eyesight. Can I lick the paintings? Yeah, that's fine. Jade, get trolled by AT. <coughs> Eighty years to where other AT began trolling garden gnostic. GG. Jade, hi! Is your robot nearby? Um, where you can type because you are asleep. Oh yes, it appears so. Okay, uh, in that case, are you having a pleasant nap? I guess I've been pretty busy here. I've had to stay asleep for a long time because John is supposed to wake up soon, but he just won't wake up. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be the one to wake him, but I don't know what to do. Uh, huh? Oh, sorry, I was looking to see if I could see him be awake in the future, but I can't see in his dreams or anything. Oh, well, thanks for trying anyway. 
But you will wake up soon, it looks like, so maybe this means you have success. I hope so. What am I doing when I wake up? Oh goodness, there's so much going on, there's a lot of trouble that you are in. Oh no! But what it comes down to is that you don't have much time anyway. This is your last day before you make the rift, and then I can't see what happens after that anymore. Which is okay with me, because to be honest, seeing your world be confusing future and past is kind of overwhelming. Yes, I know what you mean. It's so complicated and I don't even know what I should be accomplishing, I think. Using these sketches and things and my timeline adventures to play pranks on you. That sounds like it would be fun. But you guys never even played pranks on me, you were always just kinda mean. Sorry. I think the tutic thing about trolling is. If you use it to troll people, I think you are just as likely good to troll yourself, maybe even more badly. Which I think is what is going on here just between you and me. Well, I know I haven't trolled you guys, or not yet, hehehe. <laughs> no, but you sort of are. My friend is going crazy, he wants to talk to you. He left you a message a long time ago on your timeline to talk to him when your robot blows up. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Does it really blow up or was it another trick? Uh, I don't know, I can't see it blow up in your future, not on screen, I mean. There are lots of explosions all the time anyway. Too many explosions. Hmm, you could ask me in the future. Okay, I will ask. Okay. You said yes, it did blow up and you talked to him and uh, then you said he was actually a pretty nice guy, which I thought was weird. Was weird. Is he not a nice guy? Not really. Hmm, well, maybe he's just been through some tough times. Maybe we should give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, for whatever it's worth, I think you're a pretty nice guy too. Okay, thank you. Also, you seem to be the only one who ever thinks to talk to me while I'm asleep. Why is that? Oh, I guess that it makes sense. Because you have a robot to let you say things that happen on Prospect. And I'm curious. Because the only time I ever had fun playing this game was when I was asleep. But no, but now all our dream selves are dead. Oh no, dream selves can die? Yeah, I never knew that. We even thought about it. I guess it makes sense so. Uh, yeah, so enjoy your nap while it lasts. Bye. And there we have a T having fun in a memory. Those get trolled by GA. Grim also Levatic's GA began trolling Tentacle Therapist TT. Hello again, are we friends yet at this point in time? I would speculate that if we are not by now, then it is probably not to be. Pardon? Furthermore, which rose have we chosen to be this time? The stupid rose or the smart rose? I am a little busy. It sounds like you are attempting to be the smart rose this time. Please take note of the subtle scorn underlying the selection of the word attempting. Smart rose should get a kick out of that. Smart rose is all about subtle scorn, isn't she? Yes, she's looking badass. That sounds about right. We are stamp rose doesn't capitalize letters even when discussing the proper names of human monsters in Earth cinema. I think you should establish a greater commitment to a single role playing scenario. Honestly, I was looking forward to playing along and reading your dump row script for our next conversation. But it turned out there was a perfectly logical explanation for it all. Imagine my disappointment. While I imagine yours once you finally catch on. I suddenly don't understand anything. What are you talking about? I'd love to explain in detail and cause some sort of time paradox, but you see, and this revelation may be as startling as any, I am a little busy. I believe I understand. It was I who did something to provoke your scorn in a previous conversation. One which I have not had yet. Yes, that is definitely a conclusion you have just now drawn. The only thing left to do is write out the next several conversations while you maintain that understanding. And while I maintain the chilly facade you have grown to so enjoy from smart rose. It shouldn't be too difficult because, have I mentioned, I'm busy. Goodbye. Fine. Dave, keep getting told by GC. Show pastel look. Dave, Dave, I finally got it. Oh hell, I finally figured it out. Once and for all, this is you. Back to the future, the pinball. God, I would laugh playing at this pinball machine. Shall I laugh back to the future? <laughs> that's okay, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> oh god, it is so perfect. Just a cool dude and his bro right there. Adventuring through time and playing pinball. In bro have one together. Tell me that isn't so fucking perfect. Hey, speaking of which, where's my bro anyway? Haven't seen him at all since I got here. That's why he doesn't know. You can see everything that goes on, right? Or like smell it or whatever. How does it even work? How do you use a computer and know what's going on? It doesn't make sense. 
my face doesn't make sense. Dave, your face doesn't make... Damn it. Ha ha ha. But actually, your face does make sense. To my nose and my tongue. Ooh. I'm sorry, Dave, that you will never experience the sensory bouquet that I enjoy every day. That I um, ensconce myself in like a warm and comfy bathrobe made of flavor and melody. <laughs> yes, it is an, in, an insult that was by Dave was all over it. Oh, okay, so the dump is the most far-fetched explanation imaginable. Okay, got it. Anyway, I don't know where your bro is. As far as I can tell, you never see him again between now and the rift. Too bad he won't be around to bail you out again like he did when you entered. Man, don't remind me about that. So embarrassing. It's okay, I won't tell John about it. I know that's what you're worried about. Okay, cool. But look, you don't need to be upset about not having your bro to lean on anymore. Who's upset? About time that you gave me a little space. Blur, okay, whatever. You say, but that's not the point. The point is I will help you instead, Dave. Is that cool? I guess. I know everything that's going to happen to you. I can tell you before it happens, so you can be ready. I not have to go back in time and get killed all the time and stand on a toilet looking at your own blood for 10 minutes. Alright, so what's next? First you go through the gate, and when you go through you will go to another place in your wild cherry lava land, and you will quickly meet some friendly crocodiles. They will try to eat you, but that is just their way of being friendly. You shouldn't be scared. Why would I be scared? Dave, please. You are crying like a little boy. It's just happening right here in front of my nose. Your tears taste delicious, kind of like, like something you wouldn't know about. A troll delicacy called cotton candy. We have cotton candy dumpers. <laughs> oh, now what's happening? This is an animation I was waiting for. Decent. What should memorize everything is important. Remember these lines. Remember them. I don't remember this. 
don't remember this. So day 413. So if you remember the meteors of the beginning of the comic, they all happened because of this animation, because of the reckoning, because all the meteors that were coming to Skaya were put away, teleported away, and they were headed onto the planet that the players are on. <coughs> That verb is a circle. Oh, believe me, Panda, this is one of the most epic animations from the early pages. The end of Act 5 animation is freaking 13 minutes long. It apparently broke the internet when it was released on new grounds back then. I will let you digest this a little bit before I click on the next page. Also, I want to know what my cat's doing. Hey, Geraldine, what is los? Hm? Come on, here. Yeah? Hm, wo ist sie denn? Da ist sie. Okay, let's go to the next page. End of Act 4. Too cool of an animation for the net to handle. <laughs> Subway Beta. Rose Egress. This is my final entry. My co-players and I have made every earnest attempt with occasional relapse to play this game the right way. I have been meticulous and documenting the process to help our peers and successors through the trials should we fail. In my youth, I believed these classes were relegated to the earth bound, but in even this quaint supposition, I was an error. Our otherworldly antagonist, antagonist have assured us of our inevitable failure repeatedly while they got through by corroboration in my sleep. I believe them now. I just blew up my first gate. I am not sure why I did really. I'm not playing by the rules anymore. I will fly around this candy-coated rock and comb the white sand until I find answers. No one can tell me our fate can't be repaired. We've come too far. I jumped out of the way of a burning fucking tree, for God's sake. I have used the spell to whip this rock through from Earth's decaying network and sealed it in one of the servers floating in the furthest ring. The gods may disperse the signals throughout the cosmos as they wish. Perhaps it will be you will be of use to pass to future species who, like us, have been ensnared by Skya's malevolent tentacles. In case it wasn't clear, magic is real. Pardon my aggress, you are on your own now. Yeah, L. Rose Lalonde. Hours in the future. So where, where were we called another broken planet home, another Colossus Garb, and in Rex fit for the wayward. A villain becomes a witcher bond. The recent past is recalled. An accursed mascot is located among fallen brethren, its visage rewired. A wreck of souls drifts from the heavens, its owner a mystery. And this, this is just so sad. 
a boy finds a dead friend, her wing recovered. The boy sees himself in a cloud, his destination revealed. I was in the future. A mistress becomes a mendicant. The recent past is recalled. A communication device is bought, a rendezvous arranged. The slayer is summoned, the collateral presented. Snap. The role is beckoned, the bargain honored. The boy finds the castle, his courier's path crossed. Poof. The maid is delivered, an obligation satisfied. It looks like she has something else to do. The package is opened, let us wet. John. From what I heard, tell you've been through a bit of an adventure by the time you are reading this. That's so great. I love adventure and I would bet my bottom boon bug you do too. I think we are birds of a feather, John. I'm pretty eager to meet you. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned we are going to meet someday. I hear you like movies, is that right, John? I love movies too. Have you ever seen Weekend at Bernie? So freaking hilarious. It's hard to talk to Jade about movies because she doesn't really know about movies, but I'm sure you know that. Boring. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, Jade. You know I love you and I think you are a blast. Okay, speaking of Jade, we've spent quite a long time working on this present for you. It was a big team effort. Okay, I had to do quite a lot of arm twisting to get her to go along with helping me make such an oddball present for you. And so well in advance. But I had my arm sort of twisted myself to get this going in the first place. But then she came around to the idea because she can see the future. Pretty amazing if you ask me. It'll all be clear later. Get sucks with all this arm twisting, I've been getting a good workout. We should wrestle when we meet John. I love to wrestle, but I don't get a chance to wrestle with anyone that much. Do you like to get into fisticuffs, John? Scrums and whatnot? Me too. Anyway, you'd li you should listen to Jade from here on out, John, because she sure seems to know what's best for you. Whatever your adventure shows at you, I'm sure she'll tell you you can handle it. She believes in you. There's another page to this letter. <laughs> that animation was so epic, it blew the light bulb in my bedroom. Little we talk about timing. Oh my god, this is the best time ever for a light bulb to go out. <laughs> I hope you have replacements. I need to buy some light bulbs because I used the rest of mine. There's another letter from a different author. Dear John, Dear John, happy birthday! Even though it's super late and you probably went through a lot of trouble to get it, I really hope this present cheers you up. You looked so sad while you were reading my letter, um, which is to say, the one you're reading now I can explain. You see, when I go to sleep in my dreams, I wake up on the moon of a planet called Frostpit. By now you must know about this place. I have lived there in my dreams most of my life and I made so many friends there over the years. And you were there too, but you were asleep. The fact that you are awake now I think means all my friends are in trouble. You are awake because it is your job to help them. We will both help them. But um, I know these things because while I was in the moon, whenever I passed through Skaya, I could see lots of things in the clouds. The past, the future, stuff about our friends and stuff about you. Now that you are awake and apparently at the center of Skaya, wow, you should be able to see stuff in the clouds too. Maybe you already have. About this present, my pen pal helped me work on it. He included a letter too. He's really funny and silly, I like him a lot and I think you would too. It took a long time between the two of us. I'm sure the present looks like a fun and completely ridiculous thing to get, but it is also really important. You're getting exactly when you need it most. Maybe that's hard to believe, but it's true. I saw it happen already. I don't see everything, John, and I definitely don't know everything that's going to happen. But when I do know something, I always try to do my best to help people in the future. When I'm supposed to do that is, you will get the hang of it. John, I'm really looking forward to seeing you when you wake up. It's been nice playing with my prosperity and friends and all, but also kind of lonely knowing you were in the other tower sleeping and having lousy dreams. I'm not sure why I am when you are reading this, but I'm sure I'll make it down to where you are soon. Jeez, how did you get down there? Oh well, I'll find out. I can't wait to fly around the moon with you and show you all my favorite places. It'll be so much fun. Heart Jade. Yay. 
Yes. I feel like crying too after reading this. God, no checks here. A boy's grief is interrupted. His ring thawed. Oh my god, look at the bunny. It has all the weapons. All of them. The toy has taken a new master. The tactician a misstep. Check. I was in the future. A regulator becomes a renegade. The recent past is recalled. A temple is flat and soon we're revisited. A nearby laboratory is also revisited. Satellites dispatched. Most plentiful bunny ever, yes. <laughs> A sleeping boy is found, rumbling ominous. The lab is in flight, its exit inoperative. Another public servant makes a sacrifice, a citizen safety secured. With a caution tape. A tyrant is retreating, a battleship landing. And Jade is taken away. A grandfather mourns, a family tradition honored. A queen mourns, a kingdom bid farewell. Hours in the future. Her journeys to the windswept must be walked alone. <clears throat> Her entourage bid farewell. A queen becomes a crescent. And then, years. A key is employed. A common station repaired. This is how we come full circle. The ring. Even the firefly, what was her name again? John is having the ring now. There's another cloud. And inside a dark laboratory unused for years. And inside a fourth wall pilfered from a bureaucrat's office and absconded with years ago. It isn't turned on, but if it was, this is almost certainly what we would see. Recap 2. Yeah, I'm not going to do the recap because it's too long to read. Look at this. <laughs> Let's go to Act 5. Elsewhere in Pavotok space, we examine another planet forgotten by time, but we will strive to remember. What was this planet's name? So yeah, we yeah. are jumping to another point of the timeline now. It's time for the troll story. And her name. I can't read this. Oh haha, nice one, smarty pants. Really hilarious, but let's get real here. No more clown no more clowning around. Yeah, the recaps are for people who are confused and want to recap, but I don't feel like <laughs> reading them they are so long. Try again. I still can read this. That is much better. In fact, as it happens, your guess is precisely correct. What are the odds? We examine the planet Alternia. Somewhere on this planet there is a young troll. Hive bent. This young troll stands in his wispite block. It just so happens that today, the 12th billionaire perishy of the sixth dark season's equinox, is the day of this young troll's larval awakening, also known as the Swiggling Day. 
So it was six solar sweeps ago he was given life and as only today he will be given a name. Six Alternian solar sweeps for convenient reference is equivalent to 13 Earth years. Earth, also for convenient reference, is a planet that does not yet exist. What will the name of this young troll be? Enter name. Yeah, troll story time. You enter something predictably derogatory and this guy gets fed up by your shenanigans in record time. This guy has a lot of troll parts and the adventures are going to be quite extensive and convoluted to an even greater degree than one perhaps may be accustomed. He thinks that if you think that we have time to drag out every little gag and expect a pattern along the way, you've got another thing coming. He thinks you should cram that sobering understanding in your shit in his wind hole and tamp it down hard with your ugly stupid looking cartilage schnapp. Oh yeah, let's open a new tab. For music. Let me look, where is it? Thinks this is it. Yes. Play it. Try again. Your name is Karkat Wontas. As was previously mentioned, it is your wiggling day, which is barely even worth mentioning. It isn't any reserve, if anything, to lament the fault of your existence, of which there are certainly plenty. Let me do it, let me make the music a little lo less loud. Equally plenty, and somewhat related to the topic are your interests. You have a passion for ridiculously terrible romantic movies and rom coms. You would really be embarrassed for liking this dreadful cinema, but for some reason you are not. You like the program computers, but you are notoriously pretty awful at it. Your programs invariably damage the machines on which they are executed, which is just as well since you like to believe you specialize in computer viruses. And you major, you aspire to join the ranks of the most lethal members of your society, the trash accusers. You like to practice with your really cool sickle, but just wind up looking like kind of a doofus by yourself in your room. You like to chat with some of your other troll pals, most of which drive you bad shit up the fucking belfry. You have been trying out a new chat client beta called Trollian and you are not really sure what you think about it yet. Your troll tag is Katsino Geneticist and you speak in a manner that is almost exclusively ornery all the time. Later you will play a game with five other friends and go on a big adventure with them. This game for convenience of reference is a game that does not yet exist. But it will soon. What will you do? Kaka, I've heard the name's a fandom, yeah? He's kind of one of the main trolls. <laughs> also, we can look at his room and we learn a lot about the characters just by looking at their rooms. And I love this. <laughs> and what I just played was actually his theme song. Carcat, examine slimy purple pot. There's your wee corporation full of nourishing soap or slime. Every young troll enjoys the coiser embrace of such a vessel each night. And the relaxing ooze helps as the terrible visions of blood and carnage that plague the dark subconscious of your species. It is so inviting, a few minutes couldn't hurt. Carcat, get in. Okay, the shoe is cozy and all, but you can't be napping all day like a chump. Damn it, you're a busy guy, you're sort of a big deal. Got him slime, now you have to change your clothes too. What were you thinking? Luckily, all your clothes are the same. Troll thinks fashion is stupid. Carcat, examine movie posters. I am going to take a bathroom break really quick. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Let me blow my nose uh, because oh, it's uh, cold. Making it hard. Okay, it's time to get serious here. Three troll jiggers. Let's get real and get down to some major business. You space out and get caught up reading the titles of the films for about five minutes. Wow, these movies are great. You don't care what anyone says. Poor magic, is that? Is that John Cusack? 
the thing that most people don't realize is that John Cusack is a universal constant. I love how those just human movie posters with troll horns tacked on. Uh, he's a cancer one. Their star signs are actually a kind of a hibaki thing, we will learn about this later. It's fine where we thank you for coming. What a long arrow. This movie. Okay, this one even you have a hard time defending, but still, it's so good. The best thing about it is how Troll Sandler doesn't make you want to punch anything. Like nothing at all, really hard or anything. Carcat, capture log sickle. You grab your trusty sickle with your encryption modus. To retrieve it, you'll need to hack the code to open the card vault left behind. This will obviously prove to be a completely ridiculous and untable way of managing an inventory and lead to a great many follies. Later on, you would swap your modus with your hacker friend, a guy who, unlike you, happens to be competent with programming. That would only make sense. But for the time being, it makes your life kind of a nightmare. There are so many stupid things that happen because of this modus. So many. You just have no idea. Carcat, take card world. God damn it. You hear some unhappy grumblings to the hole below. Below, this was not the coolest thing you could have done just now. Carcat, examine large black book. You may quite sure not to capture log it and simply pick it up and read it. ATH, a handbook for the imminently deceased. Chapter 1. Prepare your ATH file. Dig your grave. A bone to pick. For death begins with life's first breath and life begins a touch of death. Troll Will Smith. ATH says additional graves. Execute null. This point die. It is a sick programming manual called ATH, a handbook for the imminently deceased. ATH is an inseparable language to work with. Its logic is composed of nothing but infinite loops, or at best, loops of effectively interminable construction. The above page in the intro section documents the simplest possible ATH code structure. Any code deviating from this basic structure will not compile. You have a whole bunch of code samples you've been messing around with on your computer. It's been frustrating at best and debilitating to your machine at worst. Packet, leave you. You step outside your West Pipe block onto one of your hive's numerous extraterrestrial landing slots. You are allowed to design this hive when you were young after you emerged victorious from your trials deep in the running caverns. You have lived here with your custodian ever since. It's almost as if your people have placed great cultural importance on teaching children to become architectural adept while we were young. It has been this way since ancient times. No one seems to know why that is. Getting to build your own hive at a young age using whatever mindering design you choose likely has left you jaded to the notion of customizing your abode. You certainly wouldn't get all that worked up about the games that happen to allow you to do such a thing. At least not for that reason. Parker, examine neighborhood. Codes it will not compile or for noses where real IT student struggles. Oh, you are. You poor one. Are you doing the IT student? IT, yes. The lawn rings are empty. Blood skims the voice in your porous cranial plates after grazing the hollow of a treasured stem, or say, an epidoned cocoon. A sour nod is produced. It's the one agitation place to make its audience squirm. It is your sixth weekly days, and with all five preceding it, blah 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 blah. Look. You don't have time for fancy poetry. It's almost as useless as those arm swing flappy things on mailboxes, assuming you even knew what those were, which don't. Trolls don't have mail. Mail is almost as useless as poetry to them. Poetry is a swing arm flappy dealy of words, and mail is a wet tilty never do that of giving people shit. Frankly, you don't know about sinks, skimming, voids, or grazing hollows, or whatever. You've got ambition. You were meant to be a big shot. To be in charge of something huge and really important, and to be totally ruthless about it. You just haven't found the dominion in which you are destined for greatness yet. Or even a vague concept of it. You haven't found your purpose, but you will tonight. You stew in your own impotent approbation in the cool dust breeze. During the dark seasons, it remains dusk for most of the day. It can stay dark for many bilunar perigees at a time. But even if it didn't, you will still have this feeling. You have a feeling it's going to be a long night. Carcat, go back inside. So trolls are actually nocturnal. They don't really take well to look into the sun or like be in the sun. So store this info away for later. 
You head back onto your block and hit up your computer station. No word from any of your loud mouse pals. No news is good news. Sweet music to your auricular sponge clots. Carcat, check out magazine. It's the latest issue of Game Club. This one appears to boast about exclusive leaks. They all boast about that, you're not even really sure what it means. Carcat, check out DVD. The Thresh Prince is the DVD of one of your favorite series, The Thresh Prince of Bel Air. It's about a green trash executioner cadet who susses up the blue blood and has flays quite pretty good. Their blood is literally blue. Lousy snobs, but Trollwell Smith shows them all how to loosen up. He is pretty much your hero. Troll TV shows have shorter titles than troll movies because TV is a much newer form of media in the society. Which is a good thing because it would be pretty hard to make this funny joke other ways. Oh, that's why they're all pale grey. Yes, because of that. <laughs> Kakat, get down to business on computer. Although I unironically think Prince of uh, then the Fresh Prince of Balea is a really good TV show. Okay, enough messing around. Time to get some work done. Maybe a little programming or oh god. It figures that installing this new beta chat client would open the floodgates. All your modern friends are going to be hounding you relentlessly. Not that they needed an excuse before. You wonder what this chump wants? Carcat, on the troll. Terminally capricious TC began trolling Casino Genetist. What is up, my inverted brother? What in the sweet almighty tain shaving fact do you want? Not a motherfucking thing, bro? Other than I be checking out how my best motherfucking friend is at you. I really can't stand you and I hate how you type, but it just bothers me so much if I mention that. You say it pretty much every time we talk, yeah, but uh, I don't have to, uh, see? But I mean, man, this feels a motherfucking unnatural and shit. You just got to be going with what feels right and where your heart's up in, you know, best friend. I wonder what kind of shitty thing I did to deserve such an awful best friend. Or maybe what terrible thing I'm going to do and get f punished for in advance. Maybe I am just like pre-intentionally the worst fucking piece of trash you ever lived and don't even know it yet, but hey look, your friendship is exhibit A, I guess. It's such a beautiful thing, this troll disease called friendship. Friendship isn't a disease shit sponge, it's like a mistake, a big joke of nature. It's a miracle. Oh no, don't. Don't start with the miracles again. Man, everywhere I look, all I see is motherfucking miracles. It's so spiritual, all these miracles and shit. Okay, let's just be taking this fucking tits bottle of fucking Fago I just cracked up open. And how's being all like hissing and shit. Motherfucking hissing man who went all and told it to do that. I wouldn't even do that, it's crazy. It's a miracle. It's a carbonation, you ignorant douche. Try getting school fed sometime instead of slurping down the word swill all day and fondling your stupid horns. No, no, bro, I don't wanna know, don't even tell me. Holy shit just steals up all the fucking magic from my miracles like a motherfucking thief. And that ain't cool. The only miracle is that you like the disgusting search, where do you even get that stuff? It's also a miracle how you dress like an imbecile and are basically the stupidest asshole I've ever known. Actually, you are right, there are miracles everywhere. I've been a fool. See, man, I'm straight up telling you, miracles. It's like, alright, computer's right, what the fuck? Miracles is what? Fuck you, fuck you, for me just reading that. Anyway, what's up with your bad self? For serious here, isn't something big all going down? What? I heard something big was going all down. Just all be telling me all what motherfucking it's up and all about. Stop saying all, are you talking about TA thing? Yeah, fuck yeah, man, so mysterious. I'm never being getting seized to be amazed by all these fucking mysteries life's got for us. Ugh, anyway, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe I'll talk to him tonight about it, maybe I won't. It's probably just another one of his projects that winds up being completely useless and a huge waste of my time. Yeah, maybe, but he's your best friend, so it's all cool. Anyway, I thought this sounded like a pretty big motherfucking deal, my man. Oh, He's high, yes. You are right. He's totally high. What? Oh, bro, never mind. I just fucking did like to scare the shit out of myself here, these damn horns. You've got to get rid of those things. They make it more embarrassing to know you. Which is a freaking miracle that that's even possible. Like, wow, God sure cooked up a doozy there. Twinkly-eyed son of a bitch just keeps you guessing, doesn't he? Man, you know, you wanna give I horns a good squeeze. Actually, you know what? Will be the miracle to end all miracles? It will be if I ever meet a kid that is spice more than you. That will make me a motherfucking convert. I'll see light so bright, I'll need GC to walk me around so I don't bump into shit. Sign me up for your, for your exotic clown religion, okay? 
Ah, you fucking got it, Waza. Yes, the troll that Kalkin was talking about is 100% totally high. Thank you for coming, Wary, and I hope you will read it yourself and get your own opinion on it. Thank you. Have a nice day. Wow, what the motherfuck? Who's this motherfucking motherfucker? How often do I have to say fucking this is unreal because this world is kind of his, his quirk. It's cool. Life is like that sometimes. It's full of mysteries. You'll be doing one thing and something else hits you just like that and you roll with it. That's what you do when life hands you lemons. The shoe is fucked on like lemonade because who the fuck knows where that fucking shit comes from? It's squeezed out of miracles as well. So what's this motherfucker's name? He needs a theme song. This one. Your name is Gamsi Makawa. You get pretty excited by clowns of a grim persuasion which may not be in full possession of the mental faculties. You belong to a rather obscure cult, which foretells of a band of rowdy and capricious minstrels which will rise one day on a musical paradise planet that does not exist yet. The beliefs of this cult are somewhat frowned upon by those dwelling in more common lawn bags. But you don't care. You got to be going with what feels right and where your heart's up in. You know, you like to practice on your one wheel device, which are which you are god awful at because your feet do not reach the pedals. <laughs> you enjoy a fine beverage and like to do a little baking sometimes. You've got all these horns all over the place and sometimes you step on them and scare the shit out of yourself. You like to chat a lot with your pal Carcat, who is usually pretty cranky, but he is your best friend. You have a lot of other great friends who you also like a lot. Your troll track is terminally capricious and you speak in a manner that is just a little bit whimsical. What will you do? Gamzy, capture a bottle of Fago. You snack a bottle of Fago. To consume the beverage is what your fellow devotees refer to as kicking the wicked Alexia. It is capture log through your miracle models, so you have absolutely no idea how the thing works. And you don't want to know. Gamzy, capture log computer. Take your husk top. Sometimes you just like to pick the up and watch the colors. It is so beautiful. Life is beautiful. Gamsy, why one wheel device? You decide to give this diabolical contraption another shot. Maybe one of these days you will get one more suited to your proportions. For now, this is all you have to work with. You just have to figure out how to stay on the thing without flying off the handle. Do some sort of acrobatic fucking pirouette of the handle into a big pile of horns. <laughs> it's just the uh, acrobatic pirouette is just coming back to haunt us. Although that was a big honk. Can see it's sample delicious pie cooling on the counter. It is still piping hot, but you can't help yourself. You sneak a taste of the soap or slime pie. You aren't supposed to eat that slime. It does funny things to a troll's head. But you were never taught that on account of a lousy upbringing. Your custodian was always out to sea. That is where he is now. Maybe you will go outside and see if you can spot him. Gamzy, take a tuckling club. Oh yeah, in case you haven't uh, found out yet, he's Capricorn. You grab a chucking club, you'll need it if you are going to go out. It's dangerous to leave unarmed, the club kind. Gamzy, go outside. You leave your hive and head out to the beach. There is no sign of your custodian. You should not stay out here very long. The sea dwellers are quite hostile. Someone is bugging you. This is exciting. You are always down for shooting the big shit with anyone that will put up with you. Now if only you could figure out how to get your husk top out of the stupid thing, it'll be a miracle if you can manage. Gamzy, retrieve husk top. <laughs> Is he praying for it? He's praying for it. Poof. You say a short prayer to your beloved merciful messiah and place a pinch of special stardust in your face. Also yes, he's wearing clown makeup because he loves clowns. Homer clowns. 
<laughs> launching out. Yeah, what's keeping him this high is uh, the Fago stuff, which he uses for baking. <laughs> and not the Fago quatsch, it's the lots of slime stuff from baking. Your Solidex launches your Bower Witch far, far into the ocean. I wonder if you can just just sort of reach over and get the on the troll. Hello, Skelly there she see. Began trolling, terminally capricious, TC. Hey, Gamzy, you want to play games with me? Hey, yes, it sounds like the father fucking shits, bitches. Oh my god, I have to, they have to talk, I have to voice like two characters to talk like this now. <laughs> it sure is hard to ignore the worst things you say sometimes, but I'm gonna. The only reason I'm asking you is because your name is like game. And no other reason, get it? Haha, <laughs> well, I heard of worse fucking reasons to be getting all about to do something, honk. I should get a honking sound, actually, so that they don't have to say this out all the time. No, that should bother you, that reason. Why don't things like that bother you? No wonder Bantas can't stand you, but who cares about him? We are going to have some motherfucking shitty bitches playing together, or whatever you said. So is this a game you've heard about? The big mystery? Yeah. Wow, okay, ooh, this is going to be fucking insane. But can we play a little later? I'm outside keeping an eye out here for the old goat. You know how it is with family? No, not really. Duh, duh, duh. Oh yeah, duh. Way to go, how does that stupid bottle syrup of yours taste with your hoof so far up your mouth? Sorry. Anyway, I'll go inside in a while. Why don't you get Karkat to fire up that motherfucker with you? He likes games. Oh no. God, can you imagine all the bitching and moaning? I used to try to play stuff with him, but wow, did I learn my lesson. Alright, well, I try to get in and get up on my chill real soon and we can play. Just give me a minute. Bullshit. You know, we are just going to sit there on the beach and space out and lose track of time. Hello, Gamsy? What? Oh man, sorry. I spaced out. Did you know how beautiful the sound of the ocean is? Have you ever even seen the ocean? Or oh, I mean, smelt it. Sorry. Target, get some programming done. We don't answer the book. Oh my, he, he called it Org HGH. <laughs> also, there we can see all the names of them. Finally, some peace and quiet. Now you can bear down in your coding. This will surely last all evening without interruption. You reopened one of your ATH projects you started recently. You are still horsing around with the conditions for terminating the loops. What many ATH coders do is import finite constructs and bind the loops to the lifespan. For instance, the main loop will terminate on the death of the universe, labeled U. That way you only have to wait billions of years for it to end instead of forever. You have bound a subloop to the lifespan of the code's author, which is U. Any routine at the end will execute when you die. You figure, you figure this might be handy for coding something to release a final will and testament. Or maybe some doomsday virus. You spent a lot of time thinking of ways to make the perfect doomsday virus. Conveniently absent from ATH's extensive import library we are entities with short lifespans. Like a rapidly decaying particle that only lasts a millisecond sure would be handy. Or even a food fly or something. But no, coding with this language is all about finding ways to trick it into doing what you want. Your hacker Bucky is approximately good at it. He sent you some files which you still don't understand, but you are not going to admit that. He's even better at making viruses than you which really gets stuck in your nook. Karkat, check out one of his files. So before I continue, one of the things that I really like about doing these readings is that I am doing noises that I wouldn't have never done before. Especially not live, where people can hear me do some. And it's kind of really fun to go so over the top with some of the noises. Bifurcate this, this is import universe u1, import universe u2. ATH U1, I don't understand anything of this. This code, when executed, immediately causes the user's computer to explode and places a curse on the user forever, along with everyone he knows and everyone he'll ever met. Not surprisingly, later on you would run this code in a fit of stupidity. You don't know how he does stuff like this. What does this even mean? It's nonsense. Is it even syntactically viable? Are you allowed to color text like that? Ark, maybe you should ask him about it sometime. Oh, speak of the devil. Here he is bugging you about something. Time to put on your game face and pretend you don't think very highly of his abilities. 
He lived for the fun noises and voices. This is exactly why I, why I wanted to do this. Carcat and the troll. My god, he's already going off the handle. Trim Amadegang's TA began to fall in Casino Genetus's GC. I actually hate his typing code because I have so trouble reading it, so. KK, don't flip your shit about this, but I'm setting you up to play a game with some people. Why would I flip my shit about that? Because you flip your shit about everything. Well, will you look at this? Here's my shit and yet it remains unflipped. Just sitting there on the skillet, getting burnt on one side. It's a miracle. Oh, no. Are you into miracles now too? Because of Viola, you are fired free and temporarily from the game. Fuck no. Okay, nice. Miracles are like poop stains on God's underwear. Eh, <laughs> making fun of people's religions is the best thing to do. That's why he, that's why he hides some. They are fucking embarrassing. God launders in mysterious ways. Eh <laughs> heh why don't we let's shut our mouth a second and talk about this game? It'll only be a second really, you don't have to do too much. Okay, good, because I'm pretty busy tonight. What is this thing anyway? Why all the secrecy? Well, the short story is that it's an immersive simulation that you play with the group. The long story is that the fate of our civilization depends on us playing it. Huh, I guess the long way... The long was shorter than the short one. Fuck. That sounds like melodramatic bullshit, but coming from you, Kalami, I'm surprised. Sure, you went as this shit's more wheels than craft bob sauce. Right, okay. So you made this game? No, no. More like I adapted it. From what? Some crazy technology AA dug out of some ruins. Haven't you talked to her about it? Man, no. I can't talk to her. She's so spooky. I don't know why most of our friends are such spikos. Probably it's because most trolls are. If you heard what I heard every night, I mean, wow, fuck. No, let's not talk about your weird mutant brain and don't scan mine or whatever, it's off limits, you douche. I told you like a billion times I can't do that, you nubslurping fuckpot. Why are you two up to the secret stuff? Why haven't you told me anything about this? KK, I'm sorry, but really it's kind of a private matter between me and her and, I pre and I'd appreciate it. it if that was respected. Oh god, stop being so sensitive, it's a repugnant quality. Okay, how about you take your own advice? You are such a blubbering hypocrite. You are lucky I am so fucking mag magnanimous and charitable, cause otherwise there's no chance I'd waste my time on you. What a lot of shit this act that you actually think you are a hotshot, you know you hate yourself. Nobody hates himself more than you, idiot. Yeah, well, I hate you way more than I hate myself and that's fucking saying something. In fact, I hate you more than I hate myself and you hate yourself and you hate me combined. Oh, fuck that noise in every leaking orifice. It's got, you know, I hate the combined product of you and myself more than you could ever begin to hate me and myself and you and yourself on your worst day. So fucking deal with it. Okay, time out for the idiot. The idiot gets a time out and shuts up for a second. That's you. Just tell me what to do about this game. Okay, well, I'll send you a download soon. I'm setting up two teams. Like two separate competing teams so that there's a better chance of at least one group winning. And also, I guess the two teams, the two, see which one can win faster. <laughs> Not slugging, fuck, but there's an interesting good starting way for later. Yeah, good one. Okay, let me guess. There's a red team and a blue team, right? Yeah, you're on the red team. I will be the leader of the blue. Okay, then I guess I can pick my teammates then. Uh, whoa, you're not the red team leader. I picked GC for that. What? Dude, I did not think you'd be interested in this. Don't act all offended. Oh wow, now I see. Really fucking clever. Picking the blind girl to lead the team you're competing with. I know you were a cheater, lowlife fucking scumbag with no scruples or self-esteem. You were basically worthless on every level, but somehow I'm still disappointed in you. Yeah, I am such an adjudge for not providing your bubbly personality. <laughs> Nipical people skills with a leadership gig. What an inconsiderate knuckle-punched asshole I have been. I'm a hatched leader and you know it. I know your full seat flap is fluttering in the profane breeze that's shooting out your stinking meal tunnel. I do, know, I do know that much. How do you get out of your cocoon in the morning knowing you're the worst thing in the universe was ever responsible for? Also, it must be hard with your hands to persistently bothering every mutated set of genitals peppering that ghastly hust your pawn off as a body. Has a female ever looked at you without at once turning skyward and erupting like a vomit volcano? Answer me that. This is so immature. I'm basically just dawsing here at how immature you are. Like I really give a fuck who the what leader is. You want to be the leader? Fine, talk to GC about it. I guess these conversations we have do get kind of embarrassing in retrospect. Are we not friends anymore because of stuff I said? 
Eh, <laughs> you little be ask me that every time are you joking? I can't even tell anymore. It's a joke, more one. Honestly, I'm just glad nobody else is privy to our conversations. Actually, why don't we make a pact to delete this one from our logs? I'm just chattering here, scrolling up and reading this. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Sounds like someone downstairs is getting pretty crabby. This is not an encounter you're looking forward to. You probably put it off as long as you can manage. A window. <laughs> Why, who's this young lady? Oh, do I have a theme song already? I need to find a album that's where it's in. I think it's not horny about. Yeah, so that is. Your name is Teresa Pyro. You're pretty enthusiastic about dragons, but you have a particular affection for the colorful scales which you gather and use to decorate your hides. So you live alone deep in the woods, you surround yourself with a variety of plushy pals known as scale mates. You often yeah, spend your days with them in rounds of live action role playing. You used to engage in various forms of more extreme role playing with some of your other friends before you had an accident. You take an interest in justice, holding particular fascination for orchestrating the demise of the wicked. You have taken up study of brutal Etonian law and surround yourself with legal books. You have no need for copies printed in twelve well because you can smell and taste the words. You hope one day to join the honorable ranks of the legacy like a waiter. You troll to a Skellos killer waiter and you speak with the number one sublime prophets once used. You are presently the leader of the web team, poised to begin a mysterious game with five other friends in direct competition with another six of your friends, comprising the blue team. What will you do? Hell stream just went down so I can click just in time, good. So, this is Libra. Yeah, I will now say the star sign of each tool as they are introduced. Because thanks to them, I really got some hammered into my brain. Too easy, cut to the chase and begin laughing immediately. It's pretty hard to live action roleplay when there's no one who is alive nearby, but all of your scalemates are alive to you. At least you pretend to believe that to annoy people. You prepare a new campaign for one of your favorite scenarios, quad block drama. This honorable tyrannic besides. On trial is an especially detestable fellow, Senator Lemonsnout. He have sparred with a scumbag before. Tonight he faces justice. You will play the role of the prosecuting attorney. In Altania, there is no such thing as a defense attorney or a defense. In the court block, the word defense itself is offensive. Yeah, <laughs> you are welcome. Too easy. Interrogate. Most of the interrogation is in the in intimidating silence. Too easy. Slap him around a bit. Slap. Slap, slap. So many slaps. You don't want to slap too hard, enough to sting, but not to bruise. It must be methodical, business like, and persistent. You only stop when you smell tea. Mr. Senator, you smell very nice. Your lustrous yellow scales are like the sweetest gumdrops to the prosecution's nose. But your decent stinks. Don't you honestly think you could dip your cup and snout into the imperial beetle coffers like that and get away with it? Did you think your revolting abuse of the public trust would go unnoticed? Think again, good senator, why the prosecution may be blind. Rest assured, the League of Legas left. League of Legas Lecorator sees all. So these question marks are for much, much, much later. Too easy, call a witness. Oh, well played, Lemons, now well played. The prosecution's key witness murdered. How convenient! The court block has little choice but to acknowledge your cunning. You have earned just a teensy sliver of your respect back for now, but wait. Shocking development! Oh my, what have we here? The prosecution begs your pardon, dear Senator, but you appear to have dropped something. A personal satchel, perhaps, chock full of illicit and bristled beetles with which you have the unmitigated cheek to waltz before a tyranny conceived beneath your ill-gotten finery. The prosecution requests a short recess from a son of old Taiwanese so that all law avoiding and mother grub fearing citizens may go outside and fugue. Too easy. Sentence the criminal. A coin flip. 
As a prosecutor, it is your job to reach a final verdict and sentence of a principal felon while his tyranny watches in silence and submits grim approval. But you take pity on, his mis on this miserable bureaucrat. You are feeling merciful, you will give him a fighting chance. You will flip a double-headed troll, Sega, to decide his fate. You do this quite often when making important decisions. Kind of like Batman's nemesis Two-Face. Also it gave him no country for old men. It turns out there are a lot of badasses out there flipping coins. But those are earth things and you've never heard of them. It's safe to say you borrowed this gimmick from one of the many many troll things out there that's got hot bold you flipping coins from major sticks. You base a habit on whichever one smells the most badass. Crazy flip. Bling. On which side will it land? The coin trumbles through the air. Lemons now to sweating bullets. A favorable flip, the senator exhales in relief. But what are you so happy about, Mr. Lemon Snade? He looks a bit confused. He quivers a slowly probos kiss at the coin. See, the coin has exonerated him. Coin? What coin? Surely to jest, Mr. Senator, the prosecution sees no coin. She's blind, remember? Okay, <laughs> and Splashy is hanged. <laughs> Looks like she did so, does this quite a lot. Terezi, a John. Slurp, slurping. Another triumph for justice. The court work is a John. You offer final salutations to his Taiwanese and the customary manner. Okay, that's not customary at all. You are just kind of weird. It's just that your wet chalk is the most delicious chalk. You cannot get enough of it. Anyone who says there's a more delicious chalk out there simply reeks of the sight. The horror, yes, the horror. You sure had to go to a lot of trouble to do that. Too easy. Go get cane. You take your walking cane, which you use as a weapon kind of like Earth Daredevil, who you've never heard of. You will use it to wall up enemies when you enter the medium. Like this. Terese, begin recruiting wet team members. I like how you can see her screen is completely covered in like licks and snivels because this is how she sees pretty much. Your nose begins going your jump through the salivary smears on your monitor for potential teammates so you can start playing. Hmm. No, not her. Nope, not her either. Definitely not that guy. Okay, how about this girl? You like to roleplay with her sometimes via chat. You pretend you are a member of the mysterious and noble dragon it ways, while she does her own goofy thing. You don't have it in your heart to tell her that your chat RPing is manufacturously, I mean facetously. There is a troll AC. Hello's calibrator began trolling arsenic catnip AC. DC lands on your warping snoop and wraps on your cave with her noble and elegant talent, and once with her mighty snout for good measure. AC saunters from her dark cave a little bit sleepy from the recent kill. AC uses one of her mouses to lick the fresh blood of her paws, and the other want to blow you a kiss. DC, with a mighty risk of a mighty tail, plucks the kiss out of the air mightily. DC pockets the kiss in her enchanted rucksack for later to do something magical, like making goblin wishes come true. Yes, it's us. <laughs> Yes, AC finds that to be a most admirable use of a kiss. She thinks that goblin wishes need to come true to just like any other kind of person's wishes. AC begs your pardon while she whips apart this tasty beast to prepare a meal for her chops. DC eyes a beast hungrily and mightily. Uh oh! DC eyes a cups hungrily and mightily, especially mightily. Don't you dare, I mean. AC shouts, Don't you dare, indignantly. But it is too late. DC scoops up. A plump cup with a glistening majestic tail and flies off magically. The innocent cup is crying and crying and crying. AC says, no, it looks a bit crestfallen. AC gets a clever idea to slake the majestic dragon's mighty hunger. She prepares the lion's share of the slain armored cola bear for GC. GC's magnificent curiosity has been perked. Is it a bull cola bear? Oops, she asks that. AC pauses a moment and lets no one leave with a couple of smug wins on her face. She confirms it is indeed the bulliest of bears. DC instantly loses interest in the puny cup and drops it to the ground far below. But as it happens, the really cute cup lands in a bush safe and sound. You. 
he sees alarming and splendid forest grass settles over the succulent coal bearer steak. When she finishes the savoury weird meat, she lifts her throat wise head and opens her great big mouth and speaks the ancient tongue of thousand wisdoms. She says, hey, do you want to play a game with me? Daisy crinkles up her nose and prepares for a really unpresented marathon of baffling fun and obstinacy. The dragon I these two two will make neither rhyme nor reason of a perplexing behavior for even an instant. No, no, that was a real question. Want to play a game? Oh, hi. Okay, if you mean a computer game, then yes, that sounds like fun. Okay, you can be on my team. Team? Who else is playing? I haven't decided yet. A whole bunch of us on two teams. Oh, well, it does sound like it would be a lot of fun, but I think I should get permission first. Blah, that's so stupid. He's not the boss of you. I know, but still I'm kind of scared of him and I think perhaps it's best to just run it by him first so there isn't a kerfuffle about it or anything. This is stupid in such a terrible myriad of dumb ways. You shouldn't be afraid of anyone. You could pick animals with your bare hands. And in any case, he lives nowhere near you so the whole thing is extra stupid. I know, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. I just mention it casually and it'll be fine, I'm sure, and then we can play in just a little bit. Fine. In the meantime, I will go round up some more people to play. Okay, there is a troll TC. Hello's calibrator CG began trolling Tormelish Capricious. Hey Gamesy, you want to play games with me? Hey yes, that sounds like some motherfucking shit spidgets. It sure is hard to ignore the worst things you say sometimes. You say that we seem to have the rest of this conversation we already wreck. No luck in getting this guy to play with you right now either. You guess that leaves. Oh no, not Carcat. You were only going to ask him as a last resort. You wonder what he wants. You will try to avoid mentioning the game. Hopefully he hasn't caught wind of it yet. Terezi, deal with Carcat. Casting your genitus, PC, began trolling Gallows Calibrator, she see. Hey, guess what? Big news. Like, holy shit, stop the presses. This is a humongous deal. Sort of news. Blah, what is it? You are not the red team leader. That's me. I am the leader. It's been decided. On an official basis. Okay, so I guess I'm supposed to make a big stink about this and say, why, why, I want to be the leader. What? No. I mean, you can, but it won't do any good because I am the leader and that's all there is to ever create to your poetry and shoot on the matter. Well, it may surprise you to know that I don't give a crap who gets to be leader because unlike you, I actually have a fucking smidgen of maturity and self-respect. That's a lie. You are more of a melodrama best queen than me and you know it and the stuff you're saying is pretty stunt. It's a pretend stunt. You are like a rocket propelled spaz maggot swing loaded up the ass of a psychedelic fucking freakout weasel on <coughs> idiot drugs. Let's not play make believe games here. Leader, me. <coughs> oh, Karkat, I don't care. You can be the stupid leader, I just want to play this game. Okay, great. If it's any consolation, I have selected you to be my second in command. Really? Soon. Fuck you off, I've skinned it. Okay, but seriously. I would have suggested you be the leader, but honestly, it comes with serious responsibilities and I wasn't sure if you were up to it. How could you think that? I'm an incredible leader with all kinds of prioritization and common skills. I'm going to rock the cock of this weather vane and the blue team will wish they never slithered out of the mother crop's highness undulating asshole. So just give me the full briefing, what do you know? Okay, the thing to lead you know is the leader starts out by running the client application. While I, the lowly second officer, connects to you with the server, while I remain generally in awe of your manly grandeur. And I sit at my computer doing manual course in support of your heroic escapades, which honestly I don't think you are ready for, but whatever. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I was made for. Being in charge of adventure, running around and stuff, and fucking shit up like a goddamn hero with a ripper wasp in his jock. Let's get cracking here. Launch your server or whatever, I'll store the hero program. The client, yeah. Okay, if you insist. Far be it for me to stop you from being so dashing and courageous, and to be frankly honest, a little bit handsome. Yes, exactly, now you are making sense. This is the kind of thing that sane people say. Keep it, it, there's hope for you yet. Okay, I'll try. Anything to get you to stop being such a baby? What's a baby? Oh, it's like a mythical little pink monkey, something my loser's dreams about. I thought you didn't have one. I don't, yet I'm not allowed to. Why not? Why have you never mentioned this anyway? Honestly, Teresa, it sounds like more frozing loony block nonsense. If I ever did have one, it would mean the world was coming to an end. Oh, thank God, you just said something normal. I was starting to worry there. You, back in sane land. It's true. I don't completely understand it, but that's what it told me. We need to get you out of that fucking tree and into a proper goddamn lawn ring. You've been stunted living up there by the whispers of fucking bark gnomes or something. 
I think one of my neighbors was just cold recently. Maybe you could live there. No way, screw lawn wings. More like yawn wings. I love my tree, but you're welcome to visit sometime. Especially nice in the third autumn. Okay, well, speaking of that, I should go downstairs and deal with this grumpy customer. It's going to fondle major seed flap, but hopefully it'll be quick. You can establish your connection and do your trivial sidekick stuff, I guess, in the meantime. Okay. A little later. After the night of blood's heroic arrival to the land of pulse and haze. You quickly crafted a new weapon. Home smell ya later, plus some other cool stuff. Carcat, deal with Tewesi. Show Pestalock. Casino Genesis GC began throwing Gallows Calibrator GC. You can't see me, right? Tell me what is wrong with this picture. No, I can't see you, dumbass. Oh yeah, anyway, press your nose against your slobbery screen and tell me what is wrong with this picture. It smells pretty terrible. That's because you just took a hard track of my load gaper, which for some reason I have discovered outside on this little island. You mean your toilet? Well, oh la la, excuse my disdain for your blue-blooded venue color. What color is your blood? Why, well, none of you business. Seriously, was it a serious question? Unbelievable. I will find out someday. What is with your obsessionless color? Is it bad enough you waste all my hard-earned boost trampling my hive around like that, not even in the direction of the fucking gate? But then you go and spend it on an ugly paint job. I killed a flock of imps for that quest. Carcat, please, don't pretend you didn't enjoy going around killing things. And that you wouldn't enjoy killing a whole lot more, prancing around with your little sickle being all adorable. Yeah, right, more like adorable bloodthirsty. I'm prancing around being sad, okay? Anyways, this is awful. There's no way for a leader to be treated. There's no way for a leader to be treated. Sorry, is this is what you wanted. The leader is the first one in. This is what the leader is supposed to do. No, this is not anything expect for what bullshit is. A leader shouldn't be at the mercy of the hive innovation whimsy of a psychotic blind girl. When do I get the chance to fuck up someone's hive? I should be the next one to connect to a client. No, you can't. You have to be the last one to connect to complete the chain. More lies. Think of it this way. I'm your server player, so priority has to be on me getting in the game. Before I get killed by meteors. In which case you'd be screwed in there. Then the next guy comes in, then the next. And you bring the last one in. Whoa, wait, what? Meteors? What the fuck are you talking about? What does this have to do with meteors? Oh boy, you need to go with a program. You need to get with a program, Carcat. Have you talked to AA? <laughs> oh, oh, for, 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 for what? Epicalypsian. It wasn't sorry. No, of course not. Or Tief, or TA, or AG, I guess. Or CA? Really? There's like the soul controversy about this, as I'm finding out. Well, why don't you just tell me so I don't have to talk to any of those double-talking assholes? I can't. I gotta step out of the tree for a moment. When I come back, I will enter the game. See ya! Little while ago. Yeah, it's a fuck wounds again. But this time, they are on this planet. And a new troll arises. Desecrate. You're not sure why you did that, really? There'll probably turn out to be a reason. There's a reason for everything. Understanding this lets you be reckless, whoever you are. A little later. Somewhere else entirely. Puppy from the land dwellers makes you sick, whoever you are. And later still. We return to the land of pulse and haze so that we can rewind a bit. Before all that paint got slopped on your hive and before that mysterious hole was made. Man, how did that hole get made? It was when Karkat ran TA's cursed ATH program and his computer blew up. That's what happened. We'll see this happen later. It will be startling and unexpected. Hey, you spoiled us. You spoiled it. Karkat, deal with crappy customer. You go downstairs and confront your custodian, which is another term for a frightening beast known as a loser's net away. The loser has looked after you since you were young in lieu of any biological parents whom you have never known. No young troll ever knows his or her blood parents, nor could such lineage ever be accurately traced. Adult trolls supply the genetic material to the filial pails carried by imperial drones that offer to the monstrous mother crop deep in the garden the brooding caverns. She then combines all the genetic material into one diabolically ancestral slurry and lays hundreds of thousands of eggs at once. Yes, literally crabby. 
The eggs hatch into young larval trolls which wriggle about to locate a cozy stalactite from which the spindles are cocoons. After they pupate, the young troll with his or her newfound limbs undergoes a series of dangerous trials. If they survive, they are chosen by a member of the diverse and terrifying subterranean monster population native to Alternia. This creature becomes the troll's losers and together they surface and choose a location to build a hive. The building process is facilitated by carpenter droids left on the planet to cater to the young, but only for building, they are on their own otherwise. The vast majority of adult trolls are off-planet serving some role in the fo forces of ongoing imperial conquest researching other star systems in the name of Alternian glory. The culture and civilization on the homeworld is maintained almost entirely by the young. Trolls sure are weird. And we have an animation or not? You leap into the domestic fray and attempt to mollify your nannying aggressor. After a lot of kicking and fussing and gnashing of teeth and the cover place, you just pull out a few chilled grow cubes from the fridge to settle the beast down. Trolls and the custodians have a peculiar arrangement of competence. The loose behaves, behaves as a lifelong bodyguard, caretaker, and whiskable sort of mentor, while the young troll must learn to function as a sort of zookeeper. We decide to agree this conflict is not a big enough deal to warrant a detailed examination of the action or an eminent musical accompaniment. We also agree that while that would have been pretty sweet, we are also in kind of a hurry here. But if it were to be accompanied by something audible, it would probably sound something like this. decide to listen to the track, close our eyes and imagine what might have been. Okay. The truth was awesome. Anyway, moving on. In fact, we are in such a hurry you could always say we need to get moving. On the double. Yeah. Okay, do I still know his theme song? Of course, I forgot. Yeah, sorry, I don't know a theme song anymore. We are staying quiet. There's this pretty cool dude, okay? Some people seem to think he's cool. Sometimes the guesses say are white. I mean, maybe. If they say so, actually, you know what, they are white. This guy's dynamite lit in a box of hot shit. Screw the haters. Anyway, he's standing around being all chill like cool dudes are known to do sometimes. And they are not moping around or nursing migraines or whatever. A cool dude like this probably has a real cool name. Or at least a name that doesn't completely fucking suck. Like at least not the kind of name that belongs to someone you just want to perpetually wail on. Maybe just a name that makes you cringe a little. But you guess you can deal with it if you've got to. It's just a guy's name. It's not like it really matters. Who cares? But he probably wouldn't just tell you what it was if you asked. He'd be way too moody for that. In fact, this guy probably thinks you've got some attitude and probably doesn't want a damn thing to do with you. You could always try to guess his name, but instead of that, here's a better idea. Why don't you just fuck off and go to hell? Here, yeah, name this cookie vote instead. Okay, what's her name? Wait, you've got to be kidding me. Kidding me, looks like we're going back to the other guy again. Alright, hang on. It appears this cool and moody dude had a change of heart. He feels pretty bad about flying off the handle like that, as if he'd wanted nothing to do with the handle. Shit would like to reconcile with the handle and perhaps seek marital counseling. So what's his name gonna be? Enter name. Your name is Sodox Captor. You are apeshit bananas at computers and you know all the codes, all of them. You are the untalented authority on epiculture networking. And so all your friends recognize your unparalleled achievements as a totally sick hacker. You feel like you could be better. It's one of a number of things you sort of beat yourself up about for no very good reason. You are sporadic and depleting bipolar mood swings. You have a penchant for bifurcation in logic and in life. Your mood and mind is hounded by the spiky creams of the imminently deceased. Your visions foretell of the planet's looming annihilation, and yet, unlike the typical scientist prophet of doom, you are gifted with vision twofold, for now. The return of the hook and shit line, yes. <laughs> you have developed a new game and adapted via code passed from the wounds and glyphs in an ancient underground temple. You believe this game to be the salvation of your race, so you are not sure how yet. 
To ensure success, you will distribute the game to two teams of friends, a red team and a blue team. You will lead the latter group. Your troll take a twin Armageddon and you spend two. You tend to speak with a bit of a lisp. Wait, wait, this is supposed to be a list, so do I have to read his stuff with a lift then? What will you do? Solops equip throwing stars to trace vesibles. Why would you do that? A high level spionic has no use for any particular specific allocation. Solox flings stars vesibles ward. You make short work of the specibles and oh god, one of your bee house mainframes, a silly combo sliced clean stew by your foolish maneuver, what were you thinking? The workers pay up and dance angry messages to you in binary code. <laughs> binary code? Oh, I love this pun. So long, taste honey. No, you do not under any circumstance eat the mind honey. The consequences are highly unpleasant. You cultivate this honey for your losers. That helps them not be such a complete idiot all the time. Really, most of the time instead. So long, calm those bees down. Nap time. So long, get to work at computer. You are always up to your nook in the newest and hottest games. It is hard to walk around the place without squishing them. Whenever that happens, you are screwed and you have to grow a new one from scratch. Or just pirate it, you guess. But tonight is no night for games. Well, okay, it is. But just one game in particular, and this game is no joking matter. It is deliriously buck nasty. Oh yeah, it should be pretty obvious with this design. It's gamily. So looks recruit team leader. Trim Armageddon TA began trolling Gellos Calibrator TC. TZ, you want to be the leader of one of the teams? You mean for your game to save the world? Yeah. Okay, I pick the red team. Okay, I didn't say anything about a red team or even that there are two teams, but fine. Obviously, you were going to set up red and blue teams. Come on, you don't know what I'm going to do. Stop being uh, tough if you can read my mind. It's not the power you have. Your strengths are being blind, tricking people or stuff. But I can't read the lisp on purpose, it's so hard. And I guess we in general they really say maybe I'm pretty decent at other stuff, but that's why I'm picking you, not some other fucking schlub from retaliation now. So looks please, you are Mr. Appleberry Blast and everyone knows those are their favorite flavors, even though you type in Ducky Mustard, which is weird. Maybe they have more than me than to me than you think than you think. Maybe I'm not the two trick hoofbeats you want to make me out of. Maybe I just want to give the red and blue thing a rush for a chance and not make it so it's like, oh look, it's a predictable fuck with those two stupid colors, it's amazing how much everyone fucking hates them. Maybe red and blue aren't that great and I hate them suddenly, have you thought of that? Maybe I'm more of an origin guy plus whatever the put with color as you type with. What is that, turquoise? Maybe it's making me turquoisey. Maybe the new name for that color is summer shithead. Mist, have you considered that? But I'm sticking with red and blue, so maybe you should stuck, suck on it. Maybe, 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 maybe is a stupid word. Maybe that's a big maybe we should all ponder tonight. Over some hot shut the hell up tea. So you think I'm savvy? Yeah, I think so. Pick out whatever you want for the red team, and I need the blue team. I sent you the download soon, talk to you later. Wait, maybe you should tell me more about the game first. How exactly are we saving the world? I don't know yet. I just know what I've seen in my visions. That the world will end and our whole race dies and this is how we save it. And AA can back me up on this, so don't be all doubting me about it. I'm not doubting you, I think you are right. Mostly. Mostly, what does that mean? Well, when you talk about how you're going to die too, I'm going to die. I mean, we all are, but especially me. I'm going to get my ass served to me twofold, double the service. Like two dudes in Double Bottle Island, getting worked over by a Siamese twin misuse. But before I die, I'm going to go blind like you. It has to happen like that. I'm not sure why, but I think it's like fulfilling some requirement for a true prophet of doom. In order for the visions to be right, it has to happen and the universe will make sure it will. It's kind of like how a prophet earns his thrives by being blind, like how an angel earns the dreams. What's an angel? Some terrible mystical demon. With these awful feathery wings. Yikes! Paradox Space uses them to usher in the end. How does it know what angel to ask to use, huh? So yeah, we will all die, but most especially me, end of story. But don't take this the wrong way, but how can you be totally sure about all that? How do you know some of the real visions you are having aren't getting kind of tangled up with a uh, sort of the way you are about yourself? What do you mean? How you get mopey and you are always a victim of something and how sometimes you think you suck when you really don't. Maybe that is corroding your vision. 
okay, that's just some personal or private emotional issues and I'm dealing with that and honestly, I'd appreciate you not always to bring this, that in my face oh, we got an opponent to you get. Like this is a big circus act to you and that is your special clown pie. See, God, so sensitive. Seriously, talk to AA, she will corroborate everything. You and she are pretty tight, aren't you? Not really anymore. She used to be a lot of fun. But no talking to her, I don't know. It just somehow always makes me sad. Okay, well, tonight's not about fun. This is serious. Deliriously so. We are in serious shit stain city. Screw you and your shit stains. I will have a fucking blast and you can't stop me. Blue team. Blue team scum. Oh shit, it's on. Sucks. Sucker. Okay. Okay, I will stop here because it's now late. My cats want food and my voice is failing. So thank you guys so much for coming, for watching, and I hope I will see you again next week where I will continue Mother's Stray. Have a good day or a good night and see you.